Hello, Internet. Good afternoon. Welcome. Hello Internet, good afternoon, welcome, good morning, good night, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, we're all here together, so welcome. Cheers. Cheers me with some coffee. Coffee cheers. Mmm. Hello, my name is Jason Sebastian and this is Butterfly Square Garden place where you can be free to be yourself. So today we're doing something a little bit different that involves coffee and bum ba da bum oyster mushrooms. Ta-da! They were $3.99. And I also got, wow. Where is it? Um, it says general merch <laughs> micro pour tape because I've got this cute little jar and we're gonna be putting the oyster nub in the jar with some coffee from the coffee pot that's right over there. So coffee is good because when you brew coffee and pour the boiling water through the coffee grounds, that is called pasteurization. You're pasteurizing the coffee, which makes it a good food source for our mushrooms because um, when you pasteurize it, you kill the other microorganisms, the other molds and stuff like that, the other funguses, so that the mycelium can have a fighting chance to eat the substrate. And then um, you call it colonizing your, your jar. And then when it's ready, you put it in the fruiting chamber. So what does it look like? I've got these two jars from about a week ago. One has a hole in the top and I taped a piece of paper towel. The other one has no hole. This is kind of like an experiment. They have coffee and cardboard, which I microwaved and had, I, I like wet it and then squeezed the water out. Then I microwaved it for four minutes. Let it dry, like cool off um, and put it in with oyster nubs. I didn't even really cut them up so good. So anyways, if I were to show you, um, that is a big old white spot and it's fuzzy. And then we've got more on the bottom. So I did crack the jar lid like that much and hopefully there was some air that could get in. I don't know if I necessarily need to do that, but I did. And I also put springtails in here. Here's the other jar that I did on the same day from the same batch. And this one has also like a big old white fuzzy. So that means that it's going really well. It's hard to tell the difference between mold and mycelium in the beginning, but I don't see anything green. I don't see anything, you know, crazy colors. You want white. So those were my first two jars. This is not the first time I've ever worked with mushrooms, but this is my most recent attempts from like this week. This was my second attempt. I decided to do just oyster and coffee and I cut them up into smaller pieces and then I put it in this jar. Again, with a hole, but this time, since I didn't have micropore tape, I put an Aquaman Band-Aid on. So if you don't have micropore tape, you could hopefully 
use a Band-Aid and then you can get this nice snowy, fluffy mycelium. This is from a couple days ago. So when this jar is fully colonized, I'm gonna open up the top and then you expose it to air and then it will, uh, it'll fruit. So what does oyster fruit look like? Let's take a closer look. Let's take a sip of coffee. Mmm, coffee. Mmm, coffee. It's another waste thing. You know, people just throw out coffee. And I don't necessarily like putting coffee in with the worm castings because coffee and worm castings look the same. So people, it's like, why would you believe that I'm giving you worm castings if I'm putting coffee in the worm castings. It's like, uh, they look the same. All right, so taking this off. I'll save that maybe for later. This is called open air. Most of the time you need like a little needle with spores. Um, that, I, you know, I don't wanna do that with the no laminar flow hood, no thank you. No still, still air box, no thank you. We want really strong mycelium. Let's do this really fast. So, this is what they look like. Oyster mushrooms. These are a couple days old. It was the last micro tape in the store and the last mushrooms. And these were there the last time I bought mushrooms and they were still there. So, since they were sitting around, they uh, are like fuzzy on the end because if they realize that they're dying, they will revert back to mycelium on the stems. So that's why scientists realize that you don't need a laboratory. All you need is substrate. So this little nubby is falling off. These are called, oh man, I don't even know if any of that was on camera. These are called aborts. It's when the mycelium like starts making mushrooms and then kind of gives out. And then there's more, lots of little tiny, it starts pinning, that's what pinning looks like. But all of this is covered with light white fluff because it's reverting back to mycelium. So that's big old oyster mushrooms, the last one in the store. Oh, drat, I forgot my scissors. I gotta sterilize them real quick. Excuse me. It's always something, you know? Always something. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. First things first, so I'm gonna put some micropore tape on my jar lid. Wow, it was so easy. So now my jar can breathe. Wow, that's really, really, really cool. It looks almost like paper. Okay, so now our jar is ready. I like use dish soap. I just cleaned it by hand and then I dried it with a paper towel because um, dish towels kind of attract mold. They're like mold magnets. So, get this, get this, get this. I'm gonna snip off the mushrooms. Snip, snipping off the mushrooms. What does it smell like? Honestly, it does smell a little teensy bit fishy, which is not the most wonderful thing. But there are other oyster mushroom strains that don't smell as fishy. Um, but this is just what the store has. So, you know, if they're selling, then I'm buying. So I'm just, oop, I dropped it, but that's okay. Snipping. All right. Eh, whatever, I'll take these two, why not? So this I will cook up in a stir fry and eat 
And now we are left, I don't even know, that guy, you know what? Let's use it. Let's do a little experiment, we'll use it. So we've got one, two, three. That's basically enough to fill the jar, so I don't even really need this guy. I'll probably put it somewhere else, but we have these two big chunkos, and now we're going to cut them up. And each time I do this, I cut it up more and more. And at the, like the first time, I literally just put in big old chunks like this. And that seems to be working well. And then I, the second time, cut them up smaller. And that works better. Um, except I kind of like stirred it up with a little baby spoon. And I think that kind of smushed it in a way that I didn't want to happen. So this time, I'm just kind of going to shake them. Shake it up a little bit. But I do kind of want to get a finer chop on this because I think the finer the chop, the faster it will work. Like, you know, revert to mycelium and then the mycelium will convert the coffee grounds um, it'll colonize the jar and then we can fruit the jar and everyone will have more mushrooms and it'll get rid of some coffee waste. So everybody wins and maybe even make a little money, which could be used to further our little projects. But, you know, I just kind of want to have food. I just like the idea of, of growing food in my little closet area. So here's our pile of mushrooms. This is what I wanted to do. We're going to measure how much is going in this jar. All right, here I come with the coffee. La, 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 la. This is about four tablespoons. Four tablespoons about. How many ounces? First, I'll put a little bit in the bottom. Seventy-six ounces. Whoa. Let's do. Let's do one ounce. Okay. One ounce coffee. And then. We will add the mushrooms. How much, how many ounces of mushrooms do we got, people? So, 2.7, so a little over, you know, 1.2 ounces of mushrooms. I literally made this coffee like an hour ago, not even. Okay, so we have, how many ounces is that? 2.95, three ounces, yay! And then we're going to, Put the lid on, do a little shaky shaky. Now I kind of want to shake it up a little bit so that all of the little nubbies are covered or at least touching the coffee. And that's it. So now we just wait for those nubbies to colonize the jar. 
but I don't have to open it up. It's got a hole with a microfiber tape. Um, wow, I'm really, really excited about this. I'm really excited about this, everybody. So that's, that's that, you know? We have two ounces coffee, one ounce, right? Because we had one, two, it was three ounces. So two ounces coffee, one ounce mushroom, three ounces. And then once this is done, we'll open it up and it'll fruit and we'll be happy. So if you guys want to take a closer look, you know, there's really not much to see. Yes, it does have some white spots, but I don't even know. I, I'm concerned that these are going to go bad because this has a paper towel and then this one just literally got opened up. This one, I don't know. Um, so I'm doing a higher concentration of, um, you call it spawn, like the stuff that you use to grow into other stuff, you, you, it's called spawn. So anyway, there's a lot of language, you know, I'm trying to get you guys to know all of the words because when you work with mushrooms, they use words like substrate, colonize, you know. Spores, mycelium, gills. I don't know, there's a lot of words. So anyways, fruiting chamber. Okay, so I'm gonna go put this downstairs by uh, the water heater because it's really warm down there and I think it'll, it'll go even faster. And the whole point is to get this to eat, the, we want the oyster mushrooms to eat the coffee before other molds do. And then once it does that, like, we can start replicating it more and more. But I mean, honestly, what kind of started all of this was uh, because I noticed my worm jars had mycelium and it was growing into, you know, I made a post about it, if you guys saw. Um, so I got really good at growing dry rot, <laughs> you know, wood rot. It's called wood rot, it's the same thing. Um, but it eats the cellulose in the wood. And I'm like, if I can do this in my worm bins, then I can do it with, with oyster mushrooms, which are supposed to be like voracious, you know, they're supposed to be really strong growers. So anyways, you know, we have the worm bins and we've got the mushrooms. So I'll put this downstairs. Let's go downstairs. Let's all go together. Are you excited? Did I label any of these? No, I haven't labeled like any of them. But at least I've got it on video. And when you do things small time, like you don't have to label every single little thing. Um, you do have to keep an eye on it though. Okay, so where's a good spot? This is kind of warm. Where's the ground that's warm? This ground isn't even as warm as I thought. It's warm over here where I'm standing. Too bad. I don't know, I'll find somewhere to put this, somewhere warm. Above a radiator? No, it's like warm right where I'm standing. I'm putting it right there for now. It's not as warm over here. Should I like wrap it in bubble wrap and tin foil? I've got bubble wrap. Mm, I'm leaving it there for now. Or maybe I'll put it on the windowsill where it's all like dirty and shit. La, no, that's where the fruiting chamber might go. I don't want like the wood to get wood rot, you know? Like, I don't think that's wood rot, but anyways, maybe there was a leak in the rain 
um, because we had like a tile that was effed up. So I think we might be getting a little bit over here. Um, I don't know. That might be wood rot. But anyways, ooh, here's another thing I'm really excited about. So here's my basil, and then it was leaning over, so I put it in some dirt and laid it down with a rock. And now it's got roots. You can see over here. And then this one too is also rooting. These were for my kitchen, but we moved it for Christmas decorations. But uh, my basil is doing really well. The jasmine is like not doing anything. Anyways. I wish it was, yeah, warmer where I, where I thought it was. I think I'm gonna take it upstairs. I changed my mind, I'm going upstairs. Anyways, this video is getting kind of ridiculous. So I just really like mycelium and coffee and this kind of thing. It's just so cold upstairs. I'm gonna have to, you know what? <laughs> I'm getting um, a seedling incubator with um, warming trays, so that might warm the room up. But isn't that nice? Mycelium is fruiting. Cross your fingers that these don't go bad. But my goal is to develop a mycelium that's strong enough that it'll eat the food really fast. And then I can do open air um, spawning instead of having to sterilize things. Although I do have the equipment, like I have a pressure cooker and stuff, but I just can't be bothered. Look at all that nice mycelium. Like at this point, it's colonizing the food fast enough where even if there was a mold in there, like the food is already eaten, you know? It's not like the mold is going to just like blow up these jars. Uh, so I'm already calling this a success. That's why I'm still doing this. I'm like getting more and more excited. Like the more that the mycelium eats the food, the more excited I get. This is money and food, you know? Did you know if you put a mushroom in the sun, it develops vitamin D, which is really good for you. Okay. I'll keep you guys updated. Soon, soon, soon. We might have some of these all on our own. Soon, soon, soon. Bye. I have to edit all these videos together. That's gonna be my project today, is edit all the videos together. So, this plus this equals this. And then plus this equals this. And then plus this equals this. And then plus this equals this. You just add more coffee and then you get more mushrooms. And I know like a lot of places that gives coffee to the garbage and I want them to give it to me so I can make it into mushrooms and I'll pay you in mushrooms. Wouldn't it be amazing if I can sell them in a store? Oh man, I would freaking love that. I would freaking love that. If I could sell these in the store that I got them from, oh man, I would freaking love that. Ugh. Merinos, you're gonna buy these from me. Maybe, who knows, okay. Love you guys. Last look at the mycelium success. I'll keep you guys posted. Say bye to Aquaman, bye.
Mmm. Actually, it's a little salty. I use a lot of soy sauce. That would be good over rice. With some garlic and onion. Hmm. Maybe like a, a seaweed, like a sushi. I think oyster sushi would be really, really good. Oyster mushroom sushi. Cause it's fine to kind of, if, if it is fishy, I might as well make a fish dish with it. Why isn't mushroom sushi a thing? It's just soup. Should I put it in a soup? How do you guys like to eat your mushrooms? Let me know in the comments. Drop a comment below. Okay, Butterflies for Garden, I love you. Grow oyster mushrooms. Give me your coffee. Okay. I'll keep you guys posted. Um, I'm eating my mushrooms and drinking my coffee. Best way to start the morning. I'll keep you guys po posted on the mycelium. I'll clean this up later. Do you guys want to see where I put the mycelium? I'll show you. Let's go upstairs. Ooh, look at the, the stairwell. Do you know how much work that was? Ooh, that's my sister's bridge project that I'm gonna copy. Um, I gotta put that down. So that's where I have them right now. I'm kind of like still concerned that they'll get contaminated, but I put so much of the the spawn, like such a high ratio of mycelium spawn to the cut to the substrate that there should be a high chance that we get something. Oh, I forgot to mention I put springtails in the first two. But I was like, you know what? Screw the springtails, screw the shredded cardboard. It's just mushrooms and coffee. So uh my arm's getting tired, but that's it. That's it. Okay, butterflies, mushrooms, plants, orchids. I love it. Now we're doing isopods. We're doing detritus worms. I almost got a fish today. Huh, so much to do. Okay, I love you guys. Um, I'll keep you posted on the mycelium. Bye. It's all fluffy and white. Fluffy and white is a good sign. I shook them up a little bit. But yeah, that's just coffee and mushroom stub and now the mycelium. Can't, I can't wait. Couple more days. Couple more days. Bye. Jason Sebastian Butterfly Square Garden back uh, with something a little different this time. Here we've got oyster mushrooms. This is the second time I'm doing this, but I'm doing it a little differently. So the thing about mushrooms is most of the time when you're growing, not most of the time, but you use spores um and that involves like doctor level equipment Eh, you just have to use like a pressure cooker and stuff i don't want to do that anyways we're gonna grow store-bought oyster mushrooms on coffee so the first thing you do you take it out observe we've got big old caps 
we want to cut those off and then we've got the the stems we want to keep those so i've got a glass mason jar sh short and with a big open top and then a lid with a hole in it and then i don't have micro hole micro pour tape but i have a band-aid that's what i've got and then kitchen scissors let me just sterilize them really quickly with my anti-microbial tape as i wipe them off on my pants which are still not sterile anyways it's hard to get the good angle snippity snippity That's what I want. <clears throat> I wish there was a different way to do this. But, hey, I'm just snipping all the caps off. Snipping the outside a little more. So now what I'm left with is this big old ball, hunk of monka. Oop, I almost dropped it. So this can all technically revert back to mycelium. So, yep, it fits. It fits in my glass. <clears throat> Ta-da, that's it, we're done. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, let's put this in a bowl or I'll eat this later. I'm going to cook that up and eat that later. But right now, I'm that. I got a knife. I forgot to sterilize it beforehand, but I'm sterilizing it. <sighs> now I'm unsterilizing it. I'm gonna chop this up. Pretty good. Chop, I'm chopping it up pretty good, I gotta say. I'll get the angles better next time. Sorry, everybody. But this is, this is what we got. <clears throat> Don't be afraid to like actually chop it up. Probably the more the better. Who knows? We'll find out, right? We will find out. Putting it in my jar. Next stop. <laughs> Over here, I made coffee earlier, so I'm going to go get it. Ta-da, coffee, it's two scoops, which is about four tablespoons. Anyways. I learned that these are really bad angles to do a cooking show. Okay, so if I were to look closer, I would say it's about 50% milk, 
mushroom 50% coffee. And then I'm just going to stir it all up. Stirring my babies. And I am, I mean, this is really kind of contaminating it because it's all in the open air. So really, I guess what I'm curious about is will this colonize the coffee quickly or will it go moldy? And if it goes moldy, then we need to change our method. Yeah, I missed some spots. <laughs> I'm like dropping coffee now. Isn't this fun, everybody? Oops, I just used the, the wrong wood. This is so full of contaminations, everybody. So the reason why we used coffee is because when I made coffee earlier, I had poured boiling water over it, basically, which pasteurized it. Hmm. You know what? It is what it is. Aquaman! I just tightened the lid and it fucked up the band-aid. Okay, everybody, so now I'm giving it a good old shake. And then I'm tightening the lid. I can feel the hole. So that's it. I'll get back to you guys in a couple days and we will find out whether a 50-50% coffee mycelium works and how long it takes and what we can do with it. Can I use it to respawn or can I only grow that way? Okay, thanks. Bye. How exciting! This is almost as exciting as my honey vine. I'm like trying to get better at doing this. I keep trying. Wowie, wowie, wowie. You guys want to look at the oyster mushrooms? They're supposed to be really healthy. They're supposed to be like, um, if you put them in the sun, really high in vitamin D. They've got these pores underneath. That's pretty cool, right? Are there any really big ones? No, not really. I only got one. Last time I did two. And last time I used cardboard. That was fun. Okay, thanks. Bye.